First Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. First and foremost, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Kakadash, double arms on the positive and the spreading the truth out of the four corners earth. I'm here with another can be lesson. Let's go. I read that beautiful scripture to you guys because everything in life is about him. Um, Lord Yahweh Shai, dying for our sins, because without him, we can't even get to the Father, the Heavenly Father. Which this word and call God, he has multiple names, but the true Hebrew name is Yahweh. He is, he is this. And his son is, he says he delivered, Yahweh Shah, Hebrew, Paleo Hebrew. And um that scripture is that that's really a lesson itself. <laughs> For by him were all things created, they are in heaven, they are in earth, visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him or for him. That's it. That's the book. And the Lord comes in the volume of book and um, all throughout the books, you know, you have different, you know, you got different characters, you know what I'm saying? And they all have a testimony and it's beautiful. And I don't know why I'm getting that. I just feel like it was a beautiful scripture, but I'm going to get this lesson going. Matthew 6, verse 30 and down. Wherefore, if Yahweh so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wealth with y'all shall we be clothed? For all, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need for, of all these things. And I'm reading that scripture because of the times we're coming in. Our house is going to be jeopardized. Our job is going to be jeopardized. Our family is going to be jeopardized. Us eating. And um, the Lord said, your heavenly father know that you need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So basically, the Lord is saying right here, take care of the day. Don't worry about tomorrow. And sometimes in society, especially in Babylon, we tend to, you know, this society has us thinking a little bit too much far in the head. Sometimes we're not thinking about today. The Lord said, take thought for the day. Tomorrow has enough evils. Isaiah 65, 13. Therefore, thus said the Lord, Yahweh, behold, my servant shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. The Lord going to take care of his people. Ecclesiastes, also known as Sarah, chapter 17, verse 26. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity, for he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thy abomination vehemently. The Lord said, turn to him, turn to the light. Jeremiah thirty seventeen. For I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord, because they, they call thee a outcast, saying, this is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Nobody's seeking for us. Nobody care about our people, the tribes. Nobody care about the so-called black people and the black family. They want us on the they look they they make a joke and mockery out of us. But we're the Lord's children. And the Lord sees that he's and Lord Yahweh Shai is our savior. And he's the only one that's vouching for us on this side. Nobody else is trying to take care of the so-called black Negroes, Latinos, and the Native American. Nobody care about us. The white man don't care about us. Nobody care about us. The Lord does. And the beautiful thing about the Lord. All things was created for him, though. And we know they have this understanding. So we got to understand how valuable this understanding, this truth, and this message is. Colossians 1, 17 and down. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. Yeah, <laughs> the Lord is everything and we and, and that's our savior and that's our everything. The Lord owns everything, but he care about us. Joel 316. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be. The hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Revelation 2.25. 
but that but the <laughs> but that which ye have already hold fast till I come. That's in this understanding. We know the Lord is coming back. We don't know the time and the hour, but we know we're living the signs and the time that the Lord is coming back. He says, say, hold on to this fast. 26. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works until the end, to him will I give power over the nations. We have the that's power. Ecclesiastes 2 and 3. Cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Ecclesiastes 2 10. Look at the generation O and see that ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or did any abide his fear and was forsaken, or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? And no one. That's a rhetorical question. Anybody Lord anybody that called on the Lord, he always saved him deliver, because that's that's him. He saves he delivered. Isaiah 43, 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, that shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, that shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Psalms 23 and 4. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thou rod and thy staff, thou comfort me. Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith, lay on to eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And that's holding on to the truth. Keep keep holding. The Lord is long-suffering and merciful. We got to be long-suffering in truth as well. First Maccabees 2, 61. And thus consider ye throughout all ages that none that put their trust in him shall be overcome. No, nobody is going to get overcome that truly have faith in the Lord. No one. Ephesians 6 and 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Yahweh that you may be able to withstand the evil day and having done all to stand. We still got evils to come. <laughs> evils will still come and that's what's going to catch this whole world slipping because a lot of people are not paying attention to what's really going on. We're in the brink of war. We're in the brink of a society collapse. The money change, the MO to the B, digital device uh, is told not to take. If you take it. You would become a robot and the Lord is not dealing with you because you basically giving in. And that's the whole point of this lesson, like having faith and understanding the Lord is going to be with us through the, through the thick, through the thin. He feeding us now. And that's when faith going to kick in. That's when the true followers and whoever really truly believe in Yahweh and Yahweh Shai is going to be shown in that day. Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierce him and all kings of the earth shall well because of him. Even so. Amen. And that's Lord Yahweh Shai coming back. The king of the king. Lord, Lord. He's coming in the clouds. He's coming in that big boy chariot. Second Ezra saw that. He said it was so big like a mountain. He couldn't even see the dimension of it because it was just too long. And it said they also which pierced him. So that means whoever pierced the Lord back in the day. They here now. Revelation 15, 2. And I saw it, it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark, and over the number of his name, stand on a sea of glass, having the harps of Yahweh. And those, that's the elect, the chosen ones that made it through the trials and tribulation. That's what's to come on this earth. And, um, yeah, you know, so I'm going to end this lesson by giving all praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah by Hashem, And, um, this victory is already written. It was written. The victory is already sealed. But we got to endure and remain steadfast in the truth. So I'm in this lesson. Shalom.